every time it rains, this area floods and everything I plant here, it dies. So I'm going to try to do something to keep the rain from flooding that area. This area right in here floods every time we have a rain. It just floods, it stays flooded. Um, the water level stays up enough that it actually kills plants. It killed my cat's pajamas, Nepeta here. another one that's looking pretty sad because it's it's yellowing because it has too much water um, there's another one that one's dead I don't know if you can see it right there and then there's another one and another one it also killed my lavender which is underneath this you can't really see it but the water just got up over it so I decided that I'm going to make a drain. Now, I don't know that this will work, but we're gonna try it. So I took my handy dandy post hoe digger and uh, did it all by hand. And I dug a big area out and then I got down in there and dug a smaller hole even deeper. So this seems to be the lowest point right in here. Uh, water floods all out in here, uh, but it seems like that this is the lowest and the area that stays um, flooded the longest. So what I'm gonna do, if you can see the way the gravel line comes through here, I'm just going to fill this up with some small gravel and then maybe some larger gravel on top of the small gravel. Fill that smaller, deeper hole with small gravel. And then maybe put some larger rocks and then fill it back up with this fine stuff. This is really small gravel here uh, on top. And we'll see the next time it rains if uh, it works. I don't have any drain lines running to it. I don't think it's necessary. It's all surface runoff. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, we have a gutter on the greenhouse. And it comes down here. And I have it buried under the ground here. And it comes out right here. So, this whole area starts flooding, so it goes down in here, floods that, it comes down here, and floods all this. You know, that's not a big roof, so I don't know why it's tons of rain, but we, sometimes we will get multiple inches flash flooding type rain in a very short period of time. So, as you can see, we're standing water over any length of time is detrimental to many plants. This beautiful Brunnera is not so beautiful anymore. It's just succumbed to rot or something because it's just underwater. It just doesn't like it. I've mentioned that in other videos that the Brunnera just does not apparently like to get wet it rots easily but this uh fall in love sweetly anemone doesn't seem to care it uh you know it's not dying and it was in the same location as that brunnera so anyway we're going to see if my method works this is all new construction this greenhouse was just built uh, a couple of years ago and everything for me is a slow process. So I don't move very quickly. I do everything by hand and have a very limited budget. So there's my little seedlings and my moringa trees. 
which is a really awesome plant. And uh, there's a hibiscus. It's more of a tropical, tropical form. Anyway, hopefully you won't even be able to know there's a hole there, that I will carry this gravel right through here. All of that will be covered. You'll never even know other than the water will hit it and drain down deep into the gravel. Here you see my gravel pile. And I have uh, taken a shovel and a wheelbarrow and I shovel until I can't shovel anymore, all right? Until I'm completely exhausted. So I realized that that wheelbarrow is not full. However, over there by that gravel pile, it's pretty rough terrain. And uh, I can hardly get over the humps and bumps if this thing gets too heavy. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a Amazon woman, right? So, I fill it up, and while I'm taking a break, I, uh, I come over here, and you can see where I've already dumped it about half full. And so I'm getting ready to see how far this goes. We'll see. Well, that hole, it wasn't a whole wheelbarrow full, of course, but it didn't make much of a dent. And I'm gonna estimate about at least three more of those, same size, maybe four. I don't know. It'll settle some, so I might need to hump it a little, so maybe four. So I'm gonna keep working on it, and I'll show you when it's level. Hopefully, you won't even be able to tell there's a hole there, but you'll know because of the little dirt pile there. Well, here's the finished product. You can see the white gravel. That's the fresh gravel. It's still got a lot of gravel dust on it. And so it's not dirty like the other gravel. Um, but the hole is basically right here. I made a little channel, uh, just about a foot long, just to kind of make sure that the water comes from here, this way and this way, gets in that channel and hopefully will go down into my into my drain so it's supposed to rain saturday uh, which is uh, just a few days from today so hopefully it will work i've raised this area up a little bit as you can see my dirt pile there this is all the dirt that i got from the hole um i need to blend it with this other dirt here and probably need to mix it's, it's pretty much a hundred percent clay it's hard as a brick when i when i got it out it was just a um, mushy mucky mess but now if you step on it it's it's just hard and anyway it really needs to be amended so probably just maybe use my tiller, mix in some compost with it and just go over it and over it and over it. And hopefully that'll kind of soften up, I'll soften up the hard, hard clay. And then I'll just rake it and kind of blend it so it has a nice slope. And maybe this area here won't flood anymore. But we'll know, we'll know Saturday uh, if it is or if it isn't. Um, one quick little thing, um, if you have watched any of my other videos, you know how crazy I am about the Queen of Sweden. And I just wanted to show, this is the rose that I got from David Austin, roses, and so I am completely in love with this rose. Like, I just, it is just gorgeous. I cannot imagine any color of a rose being any more beautiful than this. It's more pink than it is apricot, um, but it's got just a hint of the apricot in it. It's a very warm pink. And they shipped it to me. It was bare root 
and uh, they had literally pruned it down to where it was just sticks about five or six just I don't know they were about four to five inches long completely dormant I put it in the ground uh, probably in it was late March I believe and it just sat there because we had some cold snaps and it just sat there and sat there and then when it started warming up it started growing producing these buds and these absolutely darling little flowers you know and it's just a new planting it's just a baby so i really honestly um don't expect it to put on a, a major show uh the, the roses do have a scent but i had to pretty much get right on it uh, to be able to smell them so my hope is is that you know, it's gonna get about four, I think about four feet tall and about three foot wide. So it's gonna be more tall than it is wide. And um, my hope is, is that it'll just kind of come up and fill this little area in here and uh, be a lovely backdrop for this little garden bed here, little flower bed beside my greenhouse. But anyway, that wasn't the point of the video, but I just, I, I, I can't stop looking at that Queen of Sweden rose. The bu bubblegum petunias, supertunias, they are just <laughs> out of control. And I mean that in the best of ways. There are three plants in this urn, and this is a really a pretty good size urn. It's pretty huge. Um, and uh, the three plants have just really taken over you can't hardly even see the urn in this one so they did exactly what I wanted them to do um, I mean what a pretty display that didn't cost me very much money at all in the last all season the ones that I planted in the ground the bubblegum supertunias that I planted in the ground and then I also have the snowdrift they got just hammered with the with the storm that came through and broke all of our trees and I am shocked at how quickly they have recovered. They were pretty much just sprawled out flat after that wind and, and heavy rain. And I want you to notice how they have perked up. Of course, I was pretty devastated after the storm. I didn't take a video of how ugly everything looked. But if you'd seen it before, just trust me when I say they have amazed me how quickly they have perked up. But I think in another month, uh, th there may not even be a gap between them. It should be just pink, white, pink, white, pink. Anyway, um, I'll give you a follow-up video and let you know how this drain works. Because, you know, all I had was a, just a one of these hand post-hole diggers. One of these jobbies right here. And I had to pull the gravel away with the rake and, the, and this hoe. And I kind of pulled it away, exposing most of the dirt. There was still a little bit of gravel. Fortunately, it was the little bitty gravel, not the big, big stuff. And then I took a shovel first and I kind of dug a perimeter and dug down as far as I could with a shovel. It's hard once you get so deep to dig with a shovel, you can't really get enough. Uh, motion in there and then I started with this post hole digger and I just kept digging and I didn't do it all in one day I dug until I was completely exhausted I would go do something else I would come back and then um, the next day I continued to dig I did measure it and the hole was 36 inches deep um, and I did it in two stages the first half of the hole at the top was uh, about two and a half feet in diameter and then the second half, so 18 inches, and then and the other 18 inches beneath it, I only made it about uh, 10 inches uh, in diameter because mainly because I got tired of digging and I just <laughs> just narrowed it down and made it a smaller hole. But it's a 30 it was a 36 inch deep hole, so three foot deep. Um, I didn't want to have to remove all this rock and dig it deeper, so I thought maybe three feet will do. 
it was getting to the point where it was getting hard. Uh, I was leaning over down into the hole to dig it, so it was getting a little bit difficult. Probably what I would do is I would go one step over, uh, probably about three, two and a half to three feet over and dig me another hole, uh, maybe, and, and just make a second hole instead of trying to dig one deeper. I might actually dig it closer to me. But anyway, we'll see what it does. I'll let you know, and uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll work because everything I plant in this area back here floods out and ends up dying. So I sure hope it works. <laughs>